CNC Touch Probe. Welcome to JBWorks Studio. Now, by the end of this video, you are going to have an understanding, and me, an understanding if it's worth having a touch probe on your CNC router. So the main advantage of adding a 3D touch probe, an active one like I have here, is that the whole process of setting XYZ0 is now completely automated. And if you ever have broken a tool by setting up the, the uh, X0 or uh, Y0 by going over too far and then break it off, then you know what I mean. That cannot happen when you use one of those gizmos. Next is that you can pick up a feature on a part. So let's say you have a bore somewhere. In relation to that bore, you want to make another feature on a finished part already. So you can pick up that bore relatively quickly and it will take really a fraction of the time. Advantage number three, and that is often overlooked, is that if you have a part that is not completely aligned in X and Y, let's say instead of laying perfectly parallel to your table, but instead it's laying like this, your touch probe actually can recognize that line right here and right here, and it will be able, or your controller actually will be able to offset that coordinate system. So you can have now a new scoot coordinate system to make your part. Lastly, you can also probe a contour or a bowed surface. Let's say your part cannot be machined over the top and you nonetheless want to engrave something into that. Then you know that the engraving will look inconsistent because the depth of cut is inconsistent. So your 3D probe actually can follow along a bowed contour like this and the controller can now pick up those points and make a correction in the z-axis to have a constant or equal depth of cut all the way on the part. Those are functions not necessarily of your cam system, but they are functions of your controller. So my plan was to build my own touch probe and I wanted to do that since a while now. However, one of the non-negotiables that I had, so one of the things that I really was focusing on to make it small in the z direction so that I can always come over the top of a part Let's say the part is in a vise, then it's already off the table. There's just not any space left up on top to implement a touch probe. So as reference, I would like to give you the size of a Heimer. This is a Heimer Central. It's a little bit bigger than the regular Heimer because you use it on lace. And this is the guy that I found on Amazon. That's an amazing uh, difference in size, I would say. So let me introduce you to this touch probe. I bought it off Amazon and I'd like to give you the specs for it. Starting out with the build quality, I think it is excellent. The outside is a hard anodized aluminum and uh, unpacking this thing just feels really good in your hands. You immediately feel that this is a really good quality item. And um, dimensionally, the shaft is precision ground and it uh, is a diameter of six millimeters. And the uh, styli actually the stylus has a dimension from the tip to the collet of 47 millimeters. And the items I don't like all that good would be the USB-C connection. I don't know about the longevity of it. And that the stylus is connected via 2.5 uh, metric M, M2.5 thread. So that is something I don't like so good. It makes it difficult to find a replacement. However, the seller, uh, PG Fun on Amazon, is also providing spare parts. You can get several of the items actually, and one of them is also the stylus. Next is that the, let me check here, oh yeah, the voltage and the uh, electrical connection. So this is an NPN, normally open contact. And that's important when you order it for your machine. That is a three wire connection. What I love about it is that it goes all the way down to five volts, so five to 24 volt. And I measured the current draw of that and it is so low that my adding CNC board actually can support this probe directly. So I don't have to pick 24 volt from the power supply. I can power it directly off the board using five volt. So the first step is to mount this 3D punch, touch probe and then to calibrate the center of the ball. And to do that, there are four screws around the perimeter. <clears throat> but um, what I just noticed is that it does not take a whole lot of force to deflect the touch probe. And, and that is a good thing, I think. However, if I use my MAR 1000s, so one micron uh, tool, it will deflect actually the probe. 
my Mutatoyo 1100s will also deflect it. That will actually now leave me with my Shara's uh, indicator. Uh, so that's the dial touch indicator. Before I adjust the probe runout, I like to see what the runout is of my collet that I'm going to use. So it's basically spindle, spindle nut plus collet. And I can show here one increment um, that is two thou, so two microns. All right, that's rather good. I'm happy with that result. So I've installed the probe and best I can tell is that they are living up to their spec. They said they would have this pre-adjusted to the center line. There's a ball to the center line axis of one one hundredth of a millimeter. So we are measuring two thousandths of an increment right here. I get six increments. That is one point two hundredths. And we measure two hundredths before. So that uh, two, two microns before. So um, that leaves us with one one hundredths or close there um, around that. So I will not touch any of the screws up on top because I'm going to mess that up. Um, probably going to take a while to get it even to one one hundredths. Um, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to leave it and going to test it further. I'm bobbling around for about 10 minutes on how to hook up my Z Touch Probe and the new 3D Touch Probe um, parallel to each other. But that's all really bloated, unnecessary content. What you need to know is that both of them have a normally open contact. And so we need to hook them up in parallel. So either one can close the circuit to the probe input of the board. And that's really all that we need to know. Okay, so one more time, I trigger the probe. So the Z-Touch probe and my signal goes when the probe is breaking the optical beam, actually, it goes to zero. And here, when I now touch it and uh, break the contact, it goes here to red and it also goes on the input to zero. Okay, um, that should work. Okay, right here is my first setup. I used a gauge block, or in German word would be parallel, to touch off the corner of that right there. And I have set that in between two one to three blocks and my hope is that if something goes haywire that the probe will just push it out of the way instead of bending the tip. Um, yeah, so. Let's see what repeatability we are going to get touching off several times on the same position. 3D, so the window comes open, asks me for a direction and I'm gonna put in one. Okay, so the problem is that it will zero out every single time to X zero and write, basically write that dimension and zero it out. But what it will not do and cannot do is go and change the machine work coordinate system. And that's what we see right here. So it's 184.535. Let's remember that number. And let's do another touch off. Five three eight. Five three five five three eight. That's three thousands. Three thou three microns. Well, be good. Let's do that again. One. Five, three, five was the original one. Five, three, three, that's minus two thou, or two microns from the original one. Let's do it again. Five, three, five, that's our original value. One more time. Five, four. That would be five thousands. Yeah, well, that looks, we are actually within the thousands of a millimeter here, uh, a few thousands, five thousands. Um, three, three minus two thousands, two microns. That is much better than I had expected of this probe. Five, three, eight, three, five was the original. So for three, eight, we already had ones. Two thousands, three thousands, that's what we're seeing. I love it. That's really good. I've tested the sensor now in uh, X, Y direction. I've not tested it in zero yet because I need to work on the macro uh, to do that. However, the maximum I can find was that one reading that we also saw there, five thousands or five micrometers.
and I have that in X and then also in Y. So if you probe something for a length, then you will have to see that the length could be off by five microns times two. That will be one hundredths of a millimeter in total because it comes from the left side and from the right side and uh, in Y direction the same. Now, I think for the money for it's on Amazon right now for seventy six dollars. Um, totally blown away with it. I'm happy that I never attempted to build my own. Um, I will further work on the macro side on my machine. And one of the things um, that I'm really worried about at the moment is that the machine controller knows exactly if a probe is connected or not connected. So it gives me a warning. But I have this now in parallel. So even if I have no plug, into the 3D finder or 3D probe, the Z probe is connected. So if I forget to plug this in, it will damage, it will definitely damage the stylus. Yes, you can get a spare part for that, but uh, I don't know if it would uh, damage any internal components. Also, those are available, uh, as I know now, as spare parts on Amazon from that same seller. Anyways, so yes, if you are in adding CNC like me and you like to share a macro that you have, hey, I would be uh, even too willing to pay some bucks for that. Or Zorotech has one, that's what I'm using right now, but I think their premium um, um, 3D macro is only available if you buy a probe from them, as I know. Maybe I'm wrong, please let me know. And the next one is if you are in good in Python programming or Arduino programming or ESP32, you could, could reach out possibly. Uh, I'm interested in losing that um, wire altogether and makes the probe wireless. Now that would be really awesome of an improvement. Okay, that is it for this video and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.